Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really simple food menu in Word. Now, before we go ahead and construct our menu, we need to identify how many different rows that we need for our table. So obviously each row is taken up with a bit of information or a menu item. And then we're going to need another row for our space here. I'm going to leave this one off at the bottom here because I want to show you how to add an additional row. So for my particular menu, I need 17 different rows. So the way in which I'm going to construct this menu is to go to the Insert tab, go down to the Table icon, click on the drop down and go down to Insert Table. Now in the number of columns here, if we just go back to the other document, You'll see I need a column for the food, a column for the prices, a column for a space, another column for the food, and another column for the prices. So that's five altogether. So let's just go back. So we need five columns and 17 rows. And then just click OK. Now it doesn't look too glamorous to start with, but don't worry, we'll go ahead and customize it all. What I do need to do is just nudge this table down a little bit so you can see my cursor flashing the top left. If I just press the return key, my cursor will then come outside that table and then I can begin to nudge the table down. The next thing I need to do is just to input all of my data for my menu. But just before I do that, I'm just going to move over these columns. So I need to move this dividing line over because I need more room for the text of the menu items than I do for the prices. So I'm going to wait until my cursor turns into a double headed arrow, click and just drag that column divider over. Then I'm going to do the same with the central dividing line. And then I'm going to do the same with this column here because this is going to be my prices. Now I'm going to go ahead and input all my data. Okay, again, it doesn't look very pretty at the moment, but we'll go ahead and adjust all of these borders and spacing to suit our requirements. So the first thing I'm going to do is just increase the distance between these two cells. And that's because the writing of the menu items is too close to the next one down. So the way in which I'm going to do that is to adjust the margins of our cells. So if I go up and highlight the table by going up to the top left and selecting the whole table, alternatively, you can just click and drag to select your table. Go up to table layout and then go along to cell margins. And you can see here you have the option to adjust the top and the bottom cell margins as well as the left and the right. So I'm going to adjust the top and the bottom to 0.15. And click OK. Now you can obviously see that my menu has jumped to the next page which is absolutely fine because we're going to now adjust all of this. The first thing I'm going to do is to adjust my margins. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of my page and down to my ruler. Now if you can't see your ruler go up to view and just click ruler. Go down to the bottom and hover between the white section and the grey section of your ruler. Your cursor will turn into a double headed arrow. Click, drag down and your margin will decrease and allow you more room on your page. You can also do this with the top margin if you want to. Completely up to you. And then we can just nudge down this table again using our return key. Perfect. You can also adjust the alignment of your text within your table. So if you just wanted the menu items to be in the center of the cells, just highlight those cells, go up to table layout, and then you can go to this section here, which allows you to place your text anywhere you like within your cell. So if you wanted to center it, you just choose the center and your food menu items will be in the center of your cells. Now I think that my cells for my menu items are a little bit too narrow so I'm just going to adjust them. 
Again, wait for my double-headed arrow and move over. I'm also going to make this table a bit wider, so I'm going to pull the table, grab the outside border and drag it over to the right. I'm going to drag it quite far and then I'm going to grab this one and pull this one over. And as you can see what that does, it gives the text a little bit more space, actually reduces the size of your table because the text will begin to adjust and then it will just give you some more space. And we can do the same with this side. We can just grab this outer border here and just pull it over to the left. Now the other thing is because we're going to put some lines in at the top here, you can just see that the line here and the alignment of my text is slightly off. I'd like my text to line up perfectly with the edge of my table and therefore the start of the line. So again, I can adjust my margins, highlight the whole table, go to table layout, cell margins, and this time I'm going to adjust my left margin to zero and press OK. As you can see now, my text is perfectly lined up with the edge of my table, which means when I place a line at the top here, which I'll show you shortly, it will all be perfectly lined up. So now what I want to do is I want to take out all of my borders. So highlight the table, go to table design and go along to this section here. Go along to borders, click on the drop down and select no borders. And then when you click off you can see roughly how your menu is starting to develop. The next thing I want to do is to introduce some lines and using tables this is really simple. So you can do this in two separate ways. You can highlight the cells where you want border lines to go. So I would like a line running across the bottom of here and the bottom of here. So I've highlighted my two cells. Go to table design. Select the border style that you want. Obviously you can choose a thicker line or a thinner line. You can also change the style of it and you can change the colour of it. So I'm going to go to borders and because this border is on the bottom of the cells that I have selected, I'll select bottom border. Click off and you can see I have now that line running across the bottom there. Alternatively, you can use the painting tool. So what you need to do here is Highlight your table, again go to table design, make sure you've formatted your line as you want it, go to border painter and then as you can see my cursor has turned into a paintbrush and simply hover over the line that you want, you can see these dotted lines here and just click, click again, I'm going to go down to desserts and do exactly the same click again, sides, click again and again. Once you're happy just go back up and click back off Border Painter and your cursor will return to normal. Of course you can put lines in any way you want to. You have a whole selection of border areas and cell borders that you can choose from and if you want to see your grid lines, so if I click off here you can see you can't see any of your table at the moment but if you select your table, go to table layout, you can go along to this icon here saying view grid lines. Now this just means that you can view with the grid lines of your table but they won't actually have any border lines. Okay let's just get rid of those a second. Now at the bottom here I want to put some contact information. So in order to add another row in fact, let's just turn the grid lines on again. All I do is I go to the very end of my bottom cell, so I'm going to put my cursor here, press the tab key on your keyboard and it will select another row. Now at the moment we've got five columns and I only want four. So I'm going to highlight this bottom row. I'm going to go up to split cells. I'm on the table layout icon split cells and I want to split mine into four. 
So just go to four and click OK. So now I've got four equal columns. So just copy my data in. And as you can see, everything's aligned over to the left. So before I click away from the table, I'm going to go up to these icons here and I'm going to click center. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to highlight my table and turn off my grid lines. Perfect. I'm just going to nudge this table down as far as I can and I know that because as soon as I hit the return key and have another page then I know I've gone too far so I'll hit the backspace key and it will drag the table back up. So now I'm going to introduce my logo. I'm going to use an icon but of course you can insert your own logo. Go to insert. I'm going to go to icons but you'll probably need to go to pictures for your own logo. Go to icon here then I'm going to select this icon here, click insert. And as you can see, once this icon's been inserted, it actually knocks everything down the page. In addition, you can see this icon won't move, and that's a really easy fix. Make sure your logo or your icon or your picture is selected. Make sure you're on graphics format or picture format. Go along to wrap text, click on the drop down and select in front of text and that will rectify the problem. Now to ensure this is perfectly in the centre, again make sure it's highlighted or selected, go up to the align tool here, click on the drop down and select align to centre. I'll just reduce the size of that slightly. Okay and now I'm going to put in the name here. And to do that, I'm going to use text boxes. So I'm going to go up to insert, along to text box, click on the drop down, and select draw text box. Then just click and drag. Now all text boxes come with a white background and a black border, as you can see here, which we want to get rid of. So what we need to do is to select our text box, make sure you're on shape format, go along to the outline icon here, select no outline, go to shape fill, click on the drop down and select no fill. Now when I've moved my text box you can see it's completely transparent. Now let's just enter in the text. I'm going to highlight all of this text by pressing command or control A on my keyboard go up to the Home tab and then using this section here I'm going to alter my font and font size. So I'm going to use this font and I'm going to increase that font size until I'm happy. Probably about 30. So I'm going to enter in 30 here, press enter and just reduce the size of my text box. Now to ensure everything's perfectly lined up, I'm going to again select the text, then I'm going to go to this center text icon here, and then up to shape format, along to the alignment tool, click on the drop down, and select align to center. Now because I've formatted the text box for this particular text, I'm just going to copy and paste it. Now obviously there's numerous ways to do that, Command or Control C plus Command or Control V, or what I like to do is just hold down my Alt or Option key, you can see my cursor changes, click and drag. Double click inside to select the text, and then enter your text. You can see my text has disappeared because my text box isn't big enough, just stretch it out. I'm just going to use a slightly different font for this, so double click. Command or Control A to select all, and then I'm going to go to the same font but a lighter version of it. And then I'm going to reduce the size of the font using the decrease font size icon here. And then go to Shape Format, go along to the Alignment tab, click on the drop down Align to Center. All we need to do now is to nudge all of these so that they are perfectly aligned. So I'm going to 
Click on this one, just move it down with my arrow key. Click on this one, just move that up with my arrow key. Okay, once you're happy with your design, you can group all of this together so you can move it around as one icon. So select the bottom set of text or text box, press down your command or control key on your keyboard, click on the next set of text or text box, click on your logo, go over to group, click on the drop down and select group. Now you can move this round as one element, which is really handy. You can also make sure it's centered again, going up to the alignment tool and clicking align to center, and that's all perfectly aligned for you. Now obviously you can go ahead and customize all this with your own font, your own colors, your own font colors. You can add those additional lines if you want to. If you're struggling to get the text on the page or you're struggling to get it into the cell, then just remember you can move the cell lines and the borders and you can also increase and decrease your margins, which obviously will give you a little bit of extra room. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.